Hey everybody, what is up and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Liz and this is Crime Time. Um, I'm your host. I sit down and I talk about true crime. And yeah, today we're going to be talking about the Freeman family murders. And basically this was a set of murders that occurred on February 26th of 1995 in Salisbury Township, Pennsylvania. So the... So this was a triple homicide, and the weapons that were used were a knife, an aluminum baseball bat, and a wooden pickaxe, well, the handle. Um, the three people that were involved that were victims were that of Dennis Freeman, Brenda Freeman, and Eric Freeman. And the perps in this case turned out to be Brian Freeman, David Freeman, and their cousin, Ben Birdwell. So just a little bit of a background is that Dennis and Brenda Freeman, they, li they lived in Salisbury Township in Pennsylvania. Dennis was a janitor at the local high school and his, him and his wife had three sons, the oldest being Brian. And he was 17 at the time, David was 16, and then Eric, the youngest, who was 11. They were an extremely devout family and they brought their sons up as being Jehovah's Witnesses. So Brian and David would end up resenting their family lifestyle because, I mean, if you grow up in a religious household, you're going to kind of like not want to follow what your parents do or what they want you to do, you know what I mean? Um, and they turn to neo-Nazism to kind of like, they felt that it was a more freeing form of how they could kind of like think of their ways in, in different, I, their ideology would be different, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. So friends of Brenda said that Brenda was actually terrified of her two oldest sons. Absolutely terrified. Brian and David, before all of this happened, they shaved their heads, bicked their heads, started wearing military uniforms. They embraced the entirety of the subculture of neo-Nazism. Brian even ended up having the word berserker tattooed across his forehead. And David had uh, Sieg Hale tattooed above his eyebrows. And Sieg Hale is the um, salute for Hitler. Heil Hitler, but the sea kale, that's what he had tattooed above his eyebrows. Um, Brenda would make phone calls to different counselors as well as different psychologists for advice when it came to her sons because she, she didn't know what to do. She was terrified. She just, if you see your child going through such a train, such a strange transition in life, you, d you don't know how to react. You just kind of like have to take it in and then put the pieces together. And sometimes you can get spooked by it. And that's what happened with Brenda. So Brian um, eventually would be admitted to a hospital for mental illness. And David was put into different juvenile facilities. This is because they... They would attend skinhead or anti-skinhead education like sessions that were run by the police and they would get in, they would get in trouble. And it's not just them getting in trouble, they also started to delve into the world of narcotics and David when he was placed in the juvenile facilities, some of them were for his substance abuse. So according to Salisbury Township Police, they visited David a total of five times and, and specifically the actual house, the Freeman house, five times between 93 and 95. They also stated that Brian threatened to kill his parents in front of the cops. And this is due to a um, 
a spat over using a Finley vehicle. Just days before they committed this murder, Brian had been suspended from high school for drawing pictures that depict racial racial entities in a book. So this brings us to February 26th of 1995. Brian, David, and Ben arrive at the house. The three of them had been out at the movies and then they they returned to the family house on Eretz Lane. So Brenda she had she ended up getting into an argument with David and Brian about Ben being in the house. It's when Brenda goes down the stairs, Brian grabs a hold of her and forces a wedge like a forces a pair of shorts like wedged in her mouth. After he does this, he then stabs her repeatedly to death with a steak knife that he had taken from the kitchen moments prior. David and Ben go upstairs into the parents' bedroom and they find Dennis and he's asleep. The two of them then beat Dennis to death with an exercise bar, so like a metal exercise bar, and an aluminum baseball bat. Like Dennis, Eric was also asleep. Eric was hit repeatedly with a pickaxe handle, which was three feet long, until he died. And they don't know if it was just one or two that killed Eric. So after they committed these murders, they then left the house armed with a 12 grade shotgun and they fled in Brenda's 1988 Pontiac. So their bodies would be found by Dennis's sister, Valerie, on like the day after the murder. So on February 27th, uh, coroners for Allentown. Um, they describes they describe this killing as one of the most brutal killings they've ever seen. Um, Lehigh County District Attorney Bob Steinberg also described the murders in such a brutal and disturbing way, and basically stating that Dennis and Eric, due to the how harsh of a beating they had, um, their faces were beat beyond recognition. So Brian and David fled to Hope, Michigan, and they went to the home of Frank Hess or Frank Hesse. He was one of their comrades through their skinhead association, a neo-Nazi association. So they would, they, okay, they met Frank at a New Year's Eve concert and they exchanged phone numbers. That's, that's how they, they initially met. And um, they would be captured at Frank's house three days after the murder took place. So in order for them to, in order for Brian to avoid the death penalty, he pled guilty to Brenda's murder. David pled guilty to the murder of Dennis, but Ben was the one that was tried for all three murders. I just, and he was convicted of the murder of Dennis due to blood on his t-shirt that they did a DNA match and determined that it was Dennis's. Nobody was ever convicted of Eric's murder. Brian confessed that the murders were stemmed from ongoing years of animosity between them and their parents. All of them were spared the death penalty, but each of them was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. So they'll spend the rest of their lives in prison. So <clears throat> all three are incarcerated through the Pennsylvania um, Department of Corrections and they are all in different different places. So one is in Cole Township, one is in Green, and one is in Mahanoy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not so there's there's actually another set of murders that 
I think I'm gonna cover in my next case, and that's the Haworth killings. But that, my friends, is the Freeman family murders, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.